Hello over there. How are you? Bro Eno Kochilo here once again and I'm inviting you today for our class. And in our class today we are going to look at uh, several commonly asked questions in an exam. So today, join us as we look at these commonly asked questions in an exam, both theory and practical. So today I want us to do it differently where I want you to take a pen and a paper to at least take some notes. So please uh, take a pen and a paper so that you can write down some of these questions. So uh, but before we continue, I want to um, ask that if you're watching this channel for the very first time, please take a second or two and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. You also can click on the bell so that in case we produce any other video, YouTube will certainly notify you. So I want also to say thank you for everybody who's uh, been watching my videos, uh, all people who've been commenting. Thank you so much. I'm so much humbled because of that support. And uh, God will richly bless you. So uh, today, let's look at uh, commonly asked questions in an exam. I've divided them uh, into four sections, where number one, we shall be looking at the model town board. Number two, we look at the highway signs. Number three, we look at general questions. And then number four, we look at uh, practical, that is uh, in the vehicle, the kind of uh, questions you'll, uh, you'll find in that car. So uh, let's look at the model town board. Now, on the model town board, if you're preparing for an exam, what are the things you need to prepare for? Number one, know the model town board very well. What is a model town board? So you write down definition. You, have, you need to know what is the definition of the model town board. And then number two, of course, the definition. The model town board is an example of road networks we have in major cities and towns in East Africa. That is the definition of the model town board. It is an example of road networks we have in major cities and towns in East Africa. Then we also have features, features of the model town board. Now the model town board is divided into three main parts or three main features. The three main parts are the traffic roads, the traffic roundabouts, the traffic parkings. Those are the three main features of the model town board. So the traffic roads, the traffic roundabout, and the traffic parkings, the three main features. So uh, on the three main features, uh, you need to know some things. On traffic roads, you need to know the model town board has how many types of roads. The answer is two. The model town board has got two types of roads where we have a one-way traffic road and two-way traffic road. If you say major and minor, you're talking about one-way one traffic road. So we have a one-way and two-way. Those, those are the two types of roads that are found on a model town board. And then we have um, types of a, a one-way traffic road. Of course, a two-way traffic road is a road where traffic flows into opposite direction. A road where traffic flows into opposite direction is a two-way traffic road. It is also known as a single carriage way. And then we have a one-way traffic road where it is a road where traffic flows into same direction, like uh, Mombasa Road, like Vika Road. That is a one-way traffic road and traffic flows towards the same direction. So uh, we have uh, types of one-way types of one way are for example a dual carriage way dual carriage way that is a road where, uh, with the two lanes that are carrying traffic towards the same direction two lanes like southern bypass uh, that is outer ring, uh, outer ring road uh, a road with the two lanes that is leading traffic towards the same direction that is a dual carriage way like even gong road and then we also have another one that has three lanes. We call it a minor road or a feeder road. That one has three lanes. Like Uru Highway, Uhuru Highway has three lanes leading traffic towards the same direction. And then we have another one which is a major road, a major highway or a major road, which is a, a road with four lanes leading traffic to the same direction. That is a major road. 
like for example Mombasa Road and Vika Road. And then we have another one which is a super highway. A super highway is that road which has six or more lanes. Six or more lanes. That's a super highway. Then, uh, so in Kenya we have uh, we don't have a super highway, but we are proud of Vika. We call it a super highway. Then, so um, we have uh, some other things you look at. Now on the traffic roads, uh, you look at options. You need to know options. Lanes on a one-way traffic road are accounted from the left side towards the right side. From the left side, according to the flow of traffic. From the left side, according to the flow of traffic, you count lanes. Or from outside to the inside. So the outer lane is lane 1 and the inner lane is lane 4 for the major road. And the outer lane is lane 1 and the inner lane is lane 3 for a minor road. So that is it. That's how you count the lanes. And then also the, the option ratio for the major road is 2, 1, 2, 4. 2 for lane 1, 1 for lane uh, 2, and then 2 for lane 3, and then 4 for lane 4. So it is 2, 1, 2, 4. If you've been watching the other videos you've uh, seen, you can go back to the Model Town Board and check that video and watch it very well and learn options. So also, that is what you need to learn about uh, the model town, the traffic road. So no options very well because you're going to be asked a, questions, a question on options. So you'll be asked, lane 4 has got how many options? Of course, lane 4 of the major road has got 4 options. Lane 3 of uh, the minor road has got how many options? It has got 5 options. So those are some of the questions on traffic roads. And then also we have um, other features like parking. You need to know the rules of parkings. Revise on the rules of parking. Uh, we have uh, uh, two types of parking on a model town board. Where we have a uh, controlled parking, which is also known as angle parking or ample parking. So it is a uh, controlled. Why is it called controlled parking? Because there is security. Security meaning that there is somebody who is manning that parking. There's somebody who is there who will tell you, come and park your car here. That is the security we are talking about. And then also, it's called ample parking. Ample meaning that it has enough space, enough time for parking. So you can park there at a, at a very long time. You have a, enough space for parking. You have enough time for parking. So it is ample parking. And then it's also known as angle parking. Angle parking. Angle parking because vehicles park at an angle. So it has three names. Controlled parking, ample parking, or angle parking. Know the rules of those parkings. Rule number one in the angle parking, you park from the farthest end. Rule number two in that parking, you park only saloon cars, small vehicles only. Not pickups, not Nissans, not minibuses. You park only saloon cars. And then number three, you park by direct forward gear and live by reverse gear. You park by direct forward and live by reverse gear. So those are the rules of angle parking. We have another one that is called flash parking or uncontrolled parking. So the flash parking or uncontrolled is called uncontrolled because there is no security that is provided in that parking. There is no security. So you have to look at the parking. So it is that parking that is alongside the road alongside the road and it has no security so it's called uncontrolled because there's no security it's called flash because vehicles park there for a very short time that is a flash you just park there and for a short time then you leave because there's no security you cannot leave your car there for a long time so it's flash parking and then also it's also known as straight parking straight parking because vehicles park facing the direction of our traffic the direction of the road so that is a straight parking so that parking also has got rules. One of the rules that is shared by both parkings is that uh, in the controlled parking and also in the ample parking, you park from the farthest end. That is the rule that is shared by both parkings. So you park from the farthest end. And then another rule is that you park all types of vehicles. But then in the angle parking, you park only saloon cars. But in the uncontrolled parking, you park all types of vehicles except tractors and trailers you park all types of vehicles except tractors and trailers 
And then another rule is that uh, uh, you pack by reverse and leave by forward. Pack by reverse and leave by forward gear. So those are the rules in those parkings. So you need to understand those rules and how to park your car. And then you have the roundabout. You need to look at the rules of the roundabout. You need to look at how you count lanes in the roundabout. You need to look at how to pick correct lanes. And then you need to look at uh, common mistakes made at the roundabout. Common mistakes made at the roundabout. So you revise for those things. The roundabout is saying that you look at uh, the rules of the roundabout, picking lanes in the roundabout, uh, counting lanes in the roundabout, and then also common mistakes made when approaching the roundabout, and then parts of the roundabout. The roundabout is divided into three parts. We have the faces of the roundabout, we have uh, uh, the inner lane, which is lane 4, and then we have uh, the traffic island. Those are three parts of the roundabout. Three parts of the roundabout. So you need to revise that one also. Another thing that you need to touch on when you're uh, dis uh, discussing or maybe preparing for an exam on a model town board, you need to look at the other features. You have, of course, other features, like, for example, the zebra crossing or pedestrian crossing. And then we have uh, another one which is the central reserve we have the central reserve we also have a yellow cab we also have a traffic island we also have a green field we also have um, a giveaway signs we also have stop signs we also have exits from the main road and then we also have exit from controlled parkings these are uh, features on a model town board features on a model town board now the signs the signs which are on a model town board are for example stop sign giveaway sign <laughs> yellow cab yellow cab which is a uh, uh, no stopping no parking no waiting and then you also have um, a roundabout is also a sign controlled parking is also a sign but not uncontrolled controlled parking is a sign we also have a, a one-way traffic road is a sign two-way traffic road is a sign so these are signs that are found on a, on a, on a model town board so all of them are features but not all of them are signs so we have signs and we have features so then that is what you need to look at uh, on the model town board and you need to know how to identify them like uh, if uh, the examiner touches on any feature you need to know what feature is that if it is a green field you know that one is a green field if it's a central reserve then you know that is a central reserve a central reserve is the one that divides the one-way traffic road into opposite direction that is it so uh, we have uh, another thing that you now we go to uh, look at highway signs highway signs uh, does not carry a lot of marks the model town boy carries 30 marks and then uh, the highway signs carries 20 marks so the highway signs uh, will have several questions like for example um, what are highway signs highway signs are those signs that give information to road users yeah so those are highway signs they are also known as road signs. They are also known as traffic signs. So you can check other videos and see on highway signs, on traffic signs. You can see uh, uh, those signs and how to identify them. Then we have three classes of highway signs. Class A, Class B, Class C. So you need to know how to identify which ones are Class A, which ones are Class B, and which ones are Class C. So and then, so how do I identify them? Because you can get into an exam room and you find that all the signs are mixed up so that you cannot just identify uh, categorically say these ones are class A, these ones are B, and these ones are C. So for you to be able to identify them, you identify them by their appearance and their features. Like the class A signs, we said they are circular in shape. So the signs you see them circular in shape, you know that these ones are class A signs. Class B signs are the ones which are uh, triangular in shape. Class C are either um, square or uh, re rectangle. Either square or rectangle. So those are class C signs. So you need to master them and understand them very correctly. So um, that is also something you must know because the examiner can tell you on this chart, which has, which has a lot of mixed up signs, can tell you identify for me five signs which are class A signs. So you point on any sign which is circular and say this one is class A, this one is class A, 
If they ask you why are you saying they are in class A, you say because they are circular in shape. Because they are circular in shape. If it is class B, you say because they are triangular in shape and red in color with their apex facing upwards. Those ones are class B signs. And then class C signs, yeah, they are um, uh, square or rectangular in shape. So those are class B. So that, that's how you identify those signs. So prepare for them and know each and every sign. Know each and every sign by name and by description. So class A signs, they give us information and orders. Class B signs, they give us information and warnings. Class C, they give us information only. So if you've been following us, you know that we have a formula that we say, Mrs. Macopro will caution her for ignorance. You can write down that one. Mrs. Macopro will caution her for ignorance. So for Mrs., we write M for mandatory. Those are class A signs. Mandatory or regulatory or signs to be observed. Those are names of class A signs. Mandatory, regulatory, or signs to be observed. Then Macopro is a subgroup of class A signs. Class A signs are subdivided into, into three subgroups. So we have Macopro. Macopro is a ma is for major. Then co is compulsory. And then pro for prohibitory signs. So the major signs are two. Stop sign and giveaway sign. Those are the two major road signs. And then there's uh, compulsory signs are those signs which are which are blue in color. The signs which are circled blue in color, they are the compulsory signs. And then we have the other ones which are circled red, they are the prohibitory signs. So that is Macopro. So that is class A, Mrs. Macopro. And then will caution her, those are class B signs. That is will caution her. That is warning signs, cautionary signs, and hazard informative signs. Warning signs, cautionary signs, and hazard informative signs. Those are class B signs. So these signs, they give information and warning. They warn the driver. So those are class B signs, and they are also known as protective signs. They protect the driver from any danger that is ahead. That is why we say pedestrian crossing ahead, severe depression ahead, a uh, uh, drift ahead, road narrows from both sides ahead. So we always say ahead, ahead, ahead. So those are class B signs. Then we have class C. So be sure to watch and check the other videos and see on uh, um, highway signs. And then also we have a uh, general knowledge. We have general knowledge like what's the first rule of roads in Kenya. The first rule of roads in Kenya is of course keep left unless overtaking keep left unless overtaking that's the first rule of roads in kenya not just keep left but then keep left unless overtaking and then which side do we overtake we overtake on the right side why because we keep left and then why do we observe traffic from the right at any at any junction why should we observe traffic from the right side or why is it that the person who is always on your right side has the right of way it's because on the right side on the right side is where danger is more close so that is why you are supposed to give traffic uh, to give way to any person who is coming on your right side so at any junction you are advised you are supposed to check traffic from the right side so that is from the side which you have to observe and check traffic because traffic danger is more closer from that direction then uh, uh, other questions like um, where does the law say you cannot stop? Where are you not allowed to overtake? So where are you not supposed to stop? Where are you not supposed to overtake? Where, uh, 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 like for example, when do we dim the vehicle lights? Uh -huh. Where are you not supposed to hoot? Those are general questions. A good driver has got how many eyes? A saloon car has how many gears? Which one is the strongest gear? Which one is the heaviest gear? Those are general knowledge questions. Who is the CS for transport? Those are general knowledge questions. So we look at them and we analyze all of them. Yeah, so you can uh, revise general questions and uh, um, 
if you come in my inbox i can be forwarding to you some of these questions so that you can go through all the general knowledge questions and then also we have uh, the last one which is a uh, practical part what are you supposed to do uh practically now kwagari you are now in that car you are now with the examiner what are you supposed to do number one when you enter uh in the, into the driver's seat you sit down and relax just the way you're relaxed you sit down and relax comfortably and then number two you adjust your seat adjust your seat ensure that it is very okay you are sitting very comfortable so you adjust you pull it forward and then you also adjust the back the back you ensure that your back is fully supported very well and then also you fasten your safety belt you fasten your safety belt like that and then you after fastening your safety belt you check the pedals that you can be able to access the pedals very well just relax don't be in any hurry you're not being a uh, um, uh, harassed you you're not in a hurry just relax do everything when you are relaxed and then at uh, the next step you're going to check is you check the mirrors if they are properly adjusted check the mirrors if they are properly adjusted you check this side mirror and the other side mirror and then you also check the driver's mirror and ensure that it's properly adjusted be before you can start moving and then that is also you'll be asked a question now that one will give you marks the examiner might not ask you that one but it will just award you marks and the way you enter the car the way you do your general setting uh the first step adjusting the seat uh safe, fastening your safety belt and if the examiner has not fastened their safety belt tell the examiner to do so to at least fasten their safety belt the seat belt so you, you remind them to do the same and now after doing that you put you switch on the ignition you switch on the ignition not the engine you switch on the ignition and I check the lights at the dashboard check the lights at the dashboard that is that you check the fuel and then you check uh you can check where the mileage you record it down if you maybe uh it's for the case of maybe if you want to go for a safari you can record the mileage but for the case of the exam you can just uh see the mileage you also can just see the fuel then you also check the lights uh, for for the, uh, uh, the the temperature gauge and see if the engine is cool or it's hot so you check and uh, see the dashboard lights uh the next video i'm going to do is about the dashboard lights and i'm going to show you the dashboard lights and see and explain to you which every uh what every light of the dashboard mean to uh to, to you as a driver so you check the dashboard lights after doing that then you switch on the ignition before you switch on the, the the engine i mean before you switch on the engine you check that the car is not engaged in a gear you check that the car is not engaged in a gear so uh if it is engaged if you feel some uh, weight yeah you feel some weight is not light the gear lever is not light you feel it's uh, sticking somewhere so you uh, remove the gear so how do you remove uh, from from the gear you disengage it you depress the clutch you depress the clutch first and then you remove uh, the gear and then after doing that ensure that it's neutral and then you start the engine how do you start it some vehicles start by you depressing the clutch pedal after depressing the clutch pedal then you start the engine now starting the engine you uh step on the brake pedal brake pedal with the clutch still inside the clutch still depressed you do what you engage the first gear you engage the first gear after doing the first gear then you come on the steering wheel you hold the steering wheel and then you start releasing the uh, before you do that release the handbrake release the handbrake after releasing the handbrake your foot is on the your foot is on the pedal brake yeah so you're on the brake so you start releasing the clutch as you release these uh, uh this brake you release the clutch up to a point where you hear that vibration at that vibration point uh, is where the car now wants to stop moving that is where you will uh, 
just uh, at that point and then you depress the accelerator uh, unaweka mafuta kidogo eh uh, mafuta kipole unaweka mafuta kipole even then you start seeing the vehicle moving so you are just just for pole pole like that so that is what you are going to do and now uh, what will be your questions in that uh, test what will the examiner want to see now the examiner will want to see some few things how to start if you have known how to uh, adjust the, your seat then your safety belt then how to check mirrors then also how to check the lights at the dashboard and then also starting the car starting the car that's why i've always told you that you need to pr practice on starting and stopping the car and then after now you've started moving how do you join the road how do you join the road that will be something that the examiner will want to know and then also how do you change lens in case you want to change lens you want to overtake how do you use mirrors do you indicate that you want to overtake you want to change lens do you indicate so you you are going to be asked questions re regarding that one you're going you're going to be uh, asked regarding that and then also reversing do you know how to reverse your car the examiner can say can you reverse and go back so do, can you reverse and then hill start can you do hill start then also parking how do you know how to park your car so those are some of the things but in this case the examiner might not ask you they will just observe and give you award you marks they will just be observing that and awarding you marks so you must be very keen on these procedures so we are saying uh, how to start the procedures should be uh, in the car in the driver's seat you need to adjust your seat adjust your seat that you can be able to access the pedals and then adjust your back that is fully supported and then also as uh, fasten your safety belt seat belt and then also check the mirrors side mirrors and the rear view mirror check that one and then check the dashboard lights and be sure that they are functional and then how to start the car like that we have said after engaging that first gear and then you re you release the uh, the handbrake and then you move so when you're moving up uh, uh, the examiner might want to know do you know how to join the main road maybe you're you're from a side road and you're joining the main road with the examiner so the examiner will want to know do you know how to join the road uh -huh. do you, at a junction can you join the main road from a junction a very sharp bend and then do you know how to change lanes if you are indicating maybe you're turning to your right making these turns can you turn very well before you turn have you checked the mirrors have you indicated we use what you call msm msm is mirror signal maneuver so mirror signal maneuver is a simple procedure that is used by drivers to communicate on the road so do you know how to use the msm changing a uh, lens overtaking and then also reversing do you know how to reverse do you know hill start do you know parking so those are the things that the examiner will want to award you marks so please practice this before you can enter that exam room and ensure that you know them very well so drop your number there and i'll be giving you the questions on general knowledge so and uh, i'll be very much happy to contact you there are some people we've met we've talked uh, some people we've talked on phone and i'm very much happy to have met you so thank you so much continue watching and if uh it's really touching you it's really informing you please do not hesitate to uh, invite somebody to watch with, with you, to watch with uh, with your friends, and also to subscribe to this channel so that at least we can reach to as many people as possible. So let's take uh, driving into online classes. So God bless you so much. I want I'm waiting you on the waiting for you on the other side where you shall be looking at the dashboard lights. So thank you so much. If you have not subscribed, please do me that favor. And just hit the subscribe button thank you so much see you in the next class ciao bye 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 bye